Okay, 2020 uh, Leisure Unity. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the underneath the hood. I've got a hood release here on the left-hand side. We're going to pop the hood. Got a hood release here. You're just going to lift that up. Take your hood prop and drop it down. Secure the hood up. Um, we're going to look left to right here. I've got diesel exhaust fluid in this rig. Um, you can get this at all your gas stations, uh, all your uh, truck stops. O'Reilly's, AutoZones, and uh, Walmart's. Uh, you want to keep that topped off before you trip. Uh, this is burned in the exhaust to help clean up the atmosphere. Um, so one of the things about this is we have a gauge on the cluster inside at the driver's area so we can look at the level on that. There's no dipstick or gauge out here. Also for the uh, oil level uh, in the engine, we can also check that at the cluster and this where we're the oil dipstick would be here, but uh, you can actually add oil here if you're needing to add any oil. Right here's our cabin air filter. We take fresh air in here, it goes through the cabin air filter inside, and that's how we get fresh air in the dash AC system. The pink that you see here in the, in the reservoir is uh, Mercedes pink. This is actual engine coolant. You always want to use the same type of product. Air cleaner here uh, for the engine oil filter down here that I'm pointing to. Uh, this engine is serviced every 20,000 miles and you want to use uh, full synthetic. They're, they're running uh, 0 30 weight in this, usually mobile one. I have my brake reservoir over here on the master cylinder. I have my washer fluid here down below. And you can also see a red cap here. I can push that back, just twist it and push it back. And you can put your jumper cables here and your negative over here, positive on this side, if you need to jump start your battery. Your battery is actually located underneath the driver's floorboard in the foot area. I'm going to show you that when we get over there. So let's take the hood back down. Remember 20,000 miles on the maintenance interval on that and using full synthetic mobile one. I've got a nice step here so I can get up and wash the windshield or get the ice off. I also have a place behind the bumper here that I can hook up a tow hook in there. So when we pop this out, you'll see there's a tow hook in your tool kit for doing this. So that if you ever need a tow or you need to get pulled out of a muddy spot or up on a tow truck, that's where they can hook up and tow you. It's a safe way to do it. These mirrors actually fold in. So if we're in a tight spot in the garage, we can fold them in and be able to making a tight spot. We've got our diesel fill over here on this side. Um, so you can fill that way and then you can actually shut the door in the winter time. If you need to get in and stay warm, still be able to fill up. I want to show you some uh, actual Mercedes chassis fuses. So these are in the chassis side. I have more of these on the driver's floorboard underneath the tool kit. And these are all chassis. So you'll find these in your Mercedes manual you can also pull up that manual on the middle screen inside on the dash, which is pretty neat, but you gotta use that when you're sitting still. They don't allow you to view that when you're driving. So the air pressures in the tires are here. We have 61 PSI in the front, 58 on the rear duals. I've got auto position on the lights. That's what I have that in. And over here on the right, you'll see this is a fog light switch and the left is not used. That's actually a European fog light for the rear that's not being used and then a dimmer for the dash display. So we have a courtesy light up here up top. And what I prefer to do is run the seat forward and run the back up and this will allow you to easily rotate that seat to use this as all part of your RV furniture inside. I'm gonna set that to memory number three. I'm gonna push memory and then number three. So that's set for that. I've got a release handle here underneath the bottom and then I can rotate it. Now on the driver's side, we're always gonna make sure that we put the parking brake, we're gonna put that back down on the floor. That will fold out of the way. So there we go. So then we can rotate the seat, make use of this nice area that we have up front. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set it for the driver, run the seat back, and then I'm gonna put the seat back. That'll get us back and out of the way. I'm going to set that for number one, just
temporarily and you can set that for your own personal preference on that. I have locks over here, electric locks. I have heated seat and then I've got my mirror control. This controls the top power mirror. The bottom one's a hand adjusted mirror. And so that's a convex mirror set up for the uh, blind spot that you might have looking out the window. Let's work our way around here. I've got just storage over here on this side. Storage over here. Now what you're going to find in here is uh, they supply you a sewer hose. And this is actually a backup sewer hose. So in case the macerator uh, were to quit working for you or you didn't want to use the macerator, you could remove the macerator, screw on the regular three inch sewer hose and be able to dump your tanks out with gravity. Uh, through the handles, so that works pretty good that way too. So we're going to store this here, and in case you would need a, a backup hose, you'll always have it there. Now, while I've got this open, I can actually look in here and see the freshwater tank. This is the drain for the tank, so I can reach in here and drain that tank real fast. So that's the freshwater tank drain. We're going to lower these doors back down, and I always push a little pressure on when I turn that lock around and I'll do the same for this one. Now you'll notice on the rear of the coach this does not have any locks on this door here because this is a propane area we fill it here we turn it on here you got to be able to get into that in case of an emergency. So when you pull up to your campsite you're going to hook up your water your water's going to come into here your city water you'll attach it to there you can actually run it up and through the little porthole that you have down below right here through the cap and that'll pop up run the hose through and then pull the door closed tight behind the hose to help keep out any bugs or any uh, rats or anything like that that might come through or mice uh, so we're going to lock this on here always use a pressure regulator back at the faucet and you want a good hose such as this one that's rated for drinking water so we've got our water pressure uh, I've got that turned on now. I need to make sure my switch here is in the city water position. Now, if I want to fill up that fresh water tank, all I've got to do is open up this valve. Now, the water coming in is going to go and fill up the fresh water tank. So over here, I also need to hook up my sewer. And the macerator can run out just like it is and then hook up into the sewer. I'm going to open this up. This has got your uh, attachment. And so what we're doing here is uh, we're just going to slide that over the end. We're going to take the cap off of this. And this is going to go down into your sewer connection. Now some of them will actually have threads. And this can be threaded onto the, the sewer connection like that. But this slips on. Make sure it's good and tight. And some folks even take a little clamp and put that all across there if you get any seepage right here. But what we're going to do is we're going to watch the tank levels inside on the gauges. And when we need to dump our tanks, we're going to come out here and open the black valve first. And then we need to turn on the macerator. So when we turn on the macerator, you can see that it will grind, chew, and pump it out of this small hose. This will also go uphill. And this will also go out 75 feet at least. One thing you can do, I'm going to turn off the macerator when we're done, when we're done emptying out that tank. It normally takes about eight or nine minutes for a full tank. But one thing you can do is you can hook up our garden hose to this, and you can run that out a long ways. You usually go out about 75 feet. You can go up about 10 feet as well. But that's good if you've got a clean out at your house, like a sewer clean out, or if you've got a sewer, a bathroom or something, and you're trying to dump your tanks into that. So that makes this very versatile and uh, just has a lot of more options with it rather than a three inch sewer hose. If I needed to take off the macerator here, for some reason it quit working, I could actually take off this band clamp, unplug the electrical connection here and just twist that off and install my hose and dump it like a normal uh, sewer hose, a sewer connection. This little cover you see on the back, I can actually too take that off. I can put a screwdriver in there if I ever get any jams in this macerator and I can turn that just like you would with a, a garbage disposal at home in the kitchen. Now, if you decide to take that macerator off of there, go ahead and put your drip cap back on there when you travel. That way you'll keep any drip from coming out. Now, when I go to store this hose back up in here, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to run all the water out. And by the way, after you've done the black, you always do the black first, and then you come behind it with the gray and open that up, and then you macerate that out over here. Now once you're done with the gray, you can shut that back up, turn off your macerator. Now they do offer a flush for the black tank. So what I could do here is hook up a garden hose or a pocket expandable hose to this. I never want to use my drinking hose, but I can hook up to this and I can let water come into there and that's going to spray down and clean out my black tank. But I do need to have the black valve open and the macerator turned on. Anytime I've got water coming into that because I'm, spray I'm spraying water into there and I need, to, I need to have some place for that water to go because I don't want to fill up the tank and have it come out of the vent or in the event that it fills up, it might come out of the toilet as well, so be careful. But this is the sewer tank flush, only for the black tank. I've got other things in here that I can look at. So I've got my water hooked up, I've got my sewer taken care of. Um, I actually have in here a place to fill up the propane. I can take it into a filling station, they're gonna fill it here and they're gonna vent it here. And that has an odor to it, so if you ever get a leak somewhere in your coach, uh, the safest thing you can do is come outside and you can turn off this master propane shutoff switch, just like that, that's for safety. Um, but I need to run propane on my rig right now, and when you're using the coach, anything you run on propane inside, such as the refrigerator, if you run the range top or the furnace, you have to have that turned on. I do have a water pump switch out here as well, so I'm running on the freshwater tank and I want to use the outdoor shower or something like that, then I can turn on that water pump and I've got water pressure here coming from my freshwater tank. Now when I have city water hooked up, I don't need that freshwater pump switch turned on. I've actually got pressure coming in and that's providing the pressure to all my taps. But when I'm just running dry camping off the tank, I do need to turn on the water pump. Now I don't have to turn it on just here. I can also turn it on in the kitchen uh, area up there by the door or inside of the bathroom. So I've got all these different switches that do the same thing and turn on the water pump there. I've got other stuff I can hook up out here. I've got cable TV hookup. I've got satellite hookup if you should have those. And uh, so carry yourself a coax cable with you. Most of the parks are gonna have cable TV available and it's free, so just hook up your coax cable to this, run it down out through the porthole, hook up to the pedestal, and you can scan your TV for the cable channels. There's something else out here that we have, and uh, Leisure provides you a winterizing hose for winterizing the coach. So part of the process of winterizing the coach, we drop all the water out of the freshwater tank, we open the low points here, we drain the, uh, the water heater on the other side, open all the taps inside and we drain out the water. Then we shut all those faucets and we can actually come out here, we can put this down into a gallon of RV antifreeze, we can go to winterize, and then when we turn on the pump, that's, actually, that's gonna suck up RV antifreeze into all these hot and cold lines throughout the coach. And that's how you winterize this coach. You can do it in about 15 minutes uh, once you find all the valves and, and uh, drain all the water out. So that's how they do it at leisure makes a really easy way to do it. One other neat thing you can do with this hose is that if I'm uh, out in the, out away from civilization, I need water, I can actually take fresh water in gallon jugs that I may buy at a store or get somewhere. I can put this hose down to that jug, I can go to winterize here, and then I can take this fill valve and go to fill, and then when I turn on the water pump, that's gonna suck up that water into the fresh water tank. So I can do that, it's called a country fill, and that allows me to put water into my tank just from other sources. Okay, so we're gonna coil this hose back up, keep this out of the way. Another way you can do this, if you wanna winterize or you need to winterize, is taking in your local RV dealer, uh, have them winterize it, usually, Usually it's not a very big cost, but uh, watch them when they do the winterization. There's a lot of videos out there now to winterize one of these coaches. Uh, very easy to do, but Leisure gives you also a plug that you can put in the city water connection here. You can put a little air pressure in here so that when you're draining out the water through the low point drain, that will help blow the water out through those lines. And so it just gives you a way to actually pressurize the line 
and help to push the water out. So we're going to leave that right there. Um, there's a light in here too, a light. Uh, the switch is actually in the door. As you go in, it's a red light that you can see. Okay. We're going to put the cap back on the, the hose. That's something too. You always want to take this cap off. People end up accidentally leaving this cap on and then it gets builds up too much pressure in this hose and then this can blow off the end and cause a real big mess. So when you're using this, before you put it down in there, take this little drip cap off of there. Okay. All right, let's work our way around here. So on the back side, we've got a backup camera up top here. We've got our access ladder. This has an extension for it. I can show you how this goes on. And it's stored inside of here. When I pull this down, I can take that out. I can put it up on the top. Make sure you, when you're climbing up and down on this ladder that you do not use this as a step on the fiberglass, always use the ladder. And so we can climb up and check our seals on our skylights. You wanna do that a couple of times a year. Uh, the sun is pretty hard, the UV light on all these roof systems, but check around your skylights and your vents for all that sealant. And if you see some cracking, clean it off, get some self-leveling sealer and touch up those areas to keep up your maintenance on your coach. So I've got a hitch back here in the back that I can run my uh, hitch out and I can pull a car or pull a boat or a trailer or a motorcycle. I've also got my seven way round here that I can bring my electrical connections out. This exhaust is for the generator over here on the right. And we're gonna take the generator and we're gonna check the oil before we run it. So I've got a diesel generator right here. I'm gonna take the, the door off. You always wanna check the oil before you run this generator. So before you go out and use your RV, do that. I've got the oil level right here between min and max. That's fine. This is a 15W40 oil. And if you ever need to top it off and add a little oil, you can do it right here. Uh, this is a lever you can actually shut down the generator if it's running. That'll choke off the fuel. This is a lockout button. So when you're actually doing, when you're doing a oil change on this, you can pop that out. And then nobody can start it from the inside. But we're going to engage it and then uh, we'll be able to start it. This generator is a diesel generator. It actually puts out about 26.7 amps. So not quite our 30 amp that we have on a shore power, but it's enough normally to run the air condition and sometimes the microwave, depending on the weather, how hot it is and uh, how many amps you're using on other stuff. But if we do overload it, the generator will shut down and it may even trip the breaker inside. I'll show you where those breakers are. This is the air cleaner. This is the fuel filter here. And you really want to do the first oil change at 20 hours. That's the break-in on these diesel generators, on the smaller ones like this, on the quiet diesels. At 20 hours on the display inside, you'll see that come up and it'll say check engine oil. So what we need to do at that point is go ahead and get our engine serviced, get the generator serviced. After that, you're good for another uh, 150 to 250 hours. So you can go a lot further between the next consecutive oil changes. But that first one's critical, and we want to make sure that we take care of the engine. Also, when you run this for the first 20 hours, go ahead and put a load on it. Go ahead and throw the air conditioner on it. You'll want to have a good load to get the ring seated and have everything uh, working correctly. If you look down here, you'll see it only holds 0.7 quarts of oil. So you can carry your quart of oil with you, and if you get out there and you're RVing, you can actually drain it right here at the bottom. You can drain, take that drain plug off, you drain it, there's no oil filter. You drain it, put the plug back on, and you can fill up with a half a quart of oil here. Usually that and just a touch over is all you need. It's a 15W40 weight of oil, but very easy to do. Anybody could do this. It's a, that's a 7 eighths wrench to be able to do that. So keep that in mind when you're out there and you want to break this generator in proper. We're going to open this up. We'll open this little door and that's storage but I wanted to show you the LP tap here they give you a fitting for this uh, from leisure and you can actually plug it into here you could hook up a barbecue grill to this and be able to really enjoy that LP in your grill outdoors or if you want to hook up a furnace outside you can do that as well but that gives you a tap to tap into the LP system on the coach now this is a full tank of LP that's already on here we've got a full tank of diesel 
and there's water. This coach is ready to go. This light also comes on when you turn on the switch here at the door. So I've got a, a light switch here. You'll see it in red right here. I've also got lights here for the handle, the inside handle. This is a step switch. The second one will lock the step out so that when I open and close the door, uh, step's gonna go in with it. But if I wanna lock it out, turn on that switch there and that locks it out. We've also got accent lights over here by the door. Uh, the batteries are located underneath the step. Now these are the house batteries for this coach. And you're gonna find them here. Uh, they're basically maintenance free. They're uh, AGM style of battery and these can be slid out. There's actually right up in here is a fuse for the solar panel system. It's a 30 amp fuse. So that would be located in the middle. And there's some fuses behind these batteries. They're larger fuses. They're normally for the generator start. There's also for the house coming in, but uh, you won't have to access them unless you had an issue with it, but you can slide these batteries out for access. We're gonna put the, the door back on. We'll just turn it and lock it down. This door also opens and closes, or you can actually lock it right here. You can see um, there's some contacts down there, and that's because we have an electric lock on this door that we can lock with our key fob. So you can lock the, the cab doors, but you can also lock the entry door. So while I've got you here, I wanted to show you, we have household breakers here. The 120 volt breakers are here. They're all labeled as to what they go to. And then down here right beside it, we have the 12 volt side. And then you have a list of all your 12 volt breakers here. And you can see right here, if one of these fuses blow, if they get a fuse that's blown, you'll get a red light over here. So you do get indicators. It's kind of nice to have. So you're not guessing which fuse is blown if you have an issue like that. But also I've got right here, I've got a big disconnect for the house batteries. So if you were to put this in storage, and you didn't have shore power to plug into, you could reach over here and boom, you could turn everything off inside. All your, uh, all your cab lights, all the lights, house lights in here, the fans, the furnace, everything goes out. But keep in mind that also that turns off your refrigerator. So you, when you're in using your rig and RVing, you're gonna have that turned on because you may turn off your refrigerator to spoil your food. So. Keep that in mind, this is primarily for storage. All right, so we're gonna shut this back down. This is our furnace, and we always recommend in this area that you use a mud dauber screen that goes over this. You can get those at your local RV center. They protect those, keep those wash from going in there and building up little mud houses, shutting down your furnace. This is our water heater. Uh, this is an Aqua Go made by Truma. The main, the two things about this Truma is number one, you want to have power turned on. You want to see a green light here. So that's going to come on. I can do it up here or I can do it at the bottom. It doesn't matter. It's the same. We're turning on power to the control panel here. There's another control panel inside that will actually turn it on. This can be ran in two different modes, comfort mode or economy mode. We'll talk about that when we go inside. But out here, I want to make sure I have power turned on. I also want to make sure, and you can see that I have water uh, in the unit as well, and I have water pressure, either the pump turned on or have city water bringing water to the water heater. There's a filter in behind this drain. This is a drain, so if I let this down, and you always want to let the pressure off before you do that, also, and drain it, and also before uh, you want to let it cool down as well before you take and lift that and drain it down. But this will be act as a drain and that'll drain right out on the ground. So in the winter time, when you want to drain this water heater, or if you just want to drain it to clean it out, you can open that up and drain it. But take the pressure off, let the temperature go down. And there, in behind here is also a filter. And so I'm not gonna open it up right now, it's under pressure. But when you pull this down, that filter is gonna come out, it's about six inches long. And that filter, you can actually put in some cleaning tablets inside of that and put this in cleaning mode to clean up the water heater. And that's recommended yearly that you do that. You can buy those tablets at your RV dealer. Um, you can put that in there, but that's a three hour cleaning cycle. So when you put it in cleaning mode at the controls, it's gonna lock it out for three hours. 
So be careful that you don't accidentally go into the cleaning mode on the control. It's going to lock it out for you. So I've got the power on. I'm going to make sure inside, the other main thing that you want to do is make sure you have no air in the hot water side. And by doing that, we're going to go, um, we're going to, go to the faucets and open them up and bleed out any air bubbles that we might have in the line. On this compartment here, I'm going to show you it's where our inverter is located. Now, the inverter does have a reset behind it. It's a circuit breaker reset. You would have to lay up underneath the coach, but there's an access hole on the other side that we can access the breaker. And so that's how you would ever reset the... This is a 2,000-watt inverter, so this is going to run your microwave. This will also run your TVs inside and all the outlets that are marked for an inverter. But up to 2,000 watts, you can power uh, most of your household appliances with that and things like that. If you're out dry camping or if you're not running the generator, you're not hooked up to shore power, you can run off of this. And we also have solar power on this coach. So we have 400 watts of solar panels hooked up up, to, up top. It goes through a solar power charge controller and it goes down to the battery. So anytime we've got sun, we're actually putting power back into the batteries as needed. But these batteries can be charged four different ways. Right now, we have the engine can charge them. You can be plugged into shore power, you can run the generator, and you have solar power. So there's a bunch of different ways of charging up this unit. So come on inside. What we're gonna do is we're gonna level up our coach first. So I'll come to equalizer system. You're gonna turn on power. And then you're going to come over here and say auto level. I'm going to use the auto level. If I wanted to manually level the coach up, I can just run the jacks down with these bottom buttons on the up and down arrow. Use the down arrow that sends the jacks down. But I'm going to use auto level. And so I'm going to push that. I've got to make sure I've got to make sure I have my brake pull. And I'm going to go ahead and first retract all the jacks before I do the auto level. We Remember, I just ran them down about two inches manually. So we're going to retract all the jacks. So when I pull into my camp spot, I'm going to hit power. And then I'm going to go here and hit auto level. So this have a, has a built-in level sensor to it. And based on that, it's going to level up my coach if it needs to lift up the front, the rear, the left, or right. And uh, you'll feel the jacks hit the ground. It is okay to use some jack pads sometimes underneath the jacks to keep them from pushing down into soft ground or dirt or sand. Uh, so you can spread that load out. So you can use jack pads underneath here. Uh, we try not to lift the wheels off the front, off the ground, or any, any of the wheels. Because remember, your parking brake is activated on the rear wheels. So we want to definitely keep those on the ground. But uh, you can always use blocks underneath your jacks as well, or underneath the wheels as well, just to keep them steady and surface. So we're going to let it do the auto level. When we're done auto leveling, we'll turn off the power, and then we're going to run the room out. So I will first want to check and make sure there's nothing in the way of the room. And one of the things that Leisure does for you is they give you something called a travel lock, okay, or a slide lock. So when you're traveling, let you come over here. You can install this in the travel lock position. So you can put it here. I'm going to run that in just a little bit. So we can run it here and here. And then when we have this, you're going to tighten it up, tighten the bar up. And what that's going to do for you is that's going to keep this slide out very stable. So as you go down the road, there's not going to be no movement, no shaking, no vibration up top on this rack. And uh, that's going to really sturdy and uh, make sure this slide stays in place real well. No noise. So if you ever hear a creaking or something, check that you don't have this in. Now, we have to remember this is in before we run the slide out back out. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out. We'll pretend we're at our campsite. We'll take it out. Now we can run the slide out. We're still leveling up here. And in my case, you can see I got actually an excess slope. I have a pretty good slope on this concrete. So what I would do, if that was the case, because I'm in too much of a slope, 
I'd go ahead and retract all my jacks and then I would use some sort of jack pad such as this. So I'll put two there and two on the other side. And this will give me more stroke on my jack and take up that space. So you may have to do that at different terrain, different campsites that you're at. Hopefully you're on a nice level kit pad and you wouldn't need to do that. So once we level up, we're going to run the room out. So I'm going to reach up here and then I'm holding down on the button. That's going to run out. I always check to make sure the seat is clear behind the slide out. Make sure you got your slide out lock out of the behind the slide and you can safely put this out. Now I'm going to run this out until we go all the way to the wall and then we're going to let up on the button. You want to hear both motors stop up here. Let's take a look at a couple of other things here. So I'm going to look at my battery. Now I'm plugged into my 30 amp cord out there, so I'm charging. I'm also going to look at this over here, and I can see that my battery level is 13.4. That's fine. That's good. I'm 13.5, very close. And I'm in a float charge, so this is telling me what my charger is doing to the batteries. So that inverter is also a charger outside. It's not only a charger, but it's a, it's a combination device. So it's float charging the batteries, FLT. Now you may see this in a bulk charge or an absorbing charge, but I ultimately want to see the batteries go to a float charge. So I'm float charging the batteries here. I'm going to look at my fresh water. I've got 65 percentage. Now remember, these are in percentages. And as I look at my gray and my black, I filled those tanks all the way up as part of my test, so I'll empty those out before we ship it. And LP is over 83%, so that's a full tank. Anything over 80% is a full tank. And notice this unit has not been winterized. It does have water in it, okay? And I'm going to turn on my water pump if I need to, so I'll have water pressure over here. Um, So what I've do, got to go do is make sure I got my valves in the right position outside. Remember, I've got city water, or I can be running just off of the tank, okay? So let's shut this off, shut that off, and this has got to go back down to normal. So anytime after I'm done filling up my tank, through this valve, I need to go back into the city water normal position. So the only time you go up to this upper position is when you want to fill up that fresh water tank with the hose connected. So, okay, so we're good here. Let's go back inside. We'll turn the pump on. We'll have water pressure and we can turn on the water heater. So I want to get to that. Okay, so we're going to turn on the water pump and We'll pretend we're dry camping. And so I've got good water pressure on the cold side. And there's a the hot side. I'm getting the air out of that. Remember what we said a while ago. So I've got the air out of the hot side there. I'm going to get some air out of this side. Turn some lights on over here. And I'm just going to get all the air I can out. That's going to ensure the success of the system the first time I turn it on and it'll light up consistent and not have a problem. So we're going to go up to the control. On the Truma AquaGo control, the first position is comfort mode, the second one is eco mode. Now I'm going to switch it over to comfort mode. You'll see a solid orange light that comes on and the water heater is actually right behind this cabinet here. You can see these are all bypass valves here, 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 and here that you see. This is actually a drain for the water heater. Now I can feel that it's turned on, it's running on LP right now. It's heating the water and it's circulating this water to all the taps that I have in this coach. So in the comfort mode, you'll get instant hot water at your faucet right away. And that's why they call it the comfort mode because every so often uh, it will heat up the water and circulate that hot water on its own. 
Now, in the eco mode, economy mode, it only heats up water when we turn on the faucet. So there is going to be a delay of getting hot water at your faucet. I think that's why everybody likes the comfort mode, so we can have hot water in the shower when we want it. So we're just going to let that run. One thing about the comfort mode, when you go to bed at night, you may hear that run about every hour or so, it'll kick on. So if you're a light sleeper, what you can do is just switch it back up to eco mode, just like that. And it will only come on when you turn on the faucet, so you won't hear that that little pump running and you won't hear it, it noise going on. A couple of other settings that we have on here, the one right below the off is the DC heater mode. That's a package that can be put on the heater. We don't have that on these. Uh, there's also a cleaning mode that I told you about outside. That's a three hour tour. So if you accidentally go down in the clean and you don't want to do that, uh, it's going to be locked up for three hours. So within 30 seconds, if you go down to clean, go back to off, and that'll stop it from going into the cleaning mode. So one of the things we want to look at too is the controls up here for the generator. So in order to start the generator from inside, you can turn that on just like that. I'm going to turn off my heavy loads, which is the air condition in this case. And you can see the, the battery voltage there is the same as the house here, very close, 13, 13.2. I've got one hour on the generator, so remember, we're looking for 20 hours as the break-in, and then we can, we can push this button and hold it down for about three seconds. And there we go. So there's the generator. Give it about uh, 30 seconds to a minute to kick over power. Uh, when that kicks in, a lot of times you will hear the, the microwave, you'll hear it come up and beep and uh, get ready to go. But yeah, after a couple of minutes, you should have power coming in from your generator. Then you can start adding your loads, like you can use your, uh, your uh, air condition. Uh, you can try using the microwave and the uh, convection oven over here. This does pull a lot of amps. This probably pulls at least uh, 10 or 11 amps. This is a convection oven grill and a microwave, so it's a combination unit. You have some little cheat uh, tips up here that you want to, some quick tips, you want to look at that and learn how to heat up your food and things like that, but you can use that as a microwave here just like this, and you can put in one minute, and there we go, we're microwaving. If you want to do a convection, there's convection, go to 250, and then we can start with that, so now we're heating up in convection mode, um, but if you want to grill, you can select a grill setting that you have there. You put in a time and you can also use the rack and that will get you up at different heights to the grill or if you have a pan that's uh, suitable you can do that and so you can brown foods and toast foods and things like that that you need to do but uh, real nice having the grill there the range top so when you want to cook in here you need to add a little air fresh air so you can crank open the valve like or the uh, window like this and then turn the valve push and hold it and then light it with a spark igniter. Leave the valve down about uh, 10 seconds or so and then let off of it. So now we can adjust our flame. If you let off of it too soon, boom, your flame's gonna go out. That's a safety valve. You won't have any gas flow and that's kind of what we want. And I have to tell you, never cook with this down. That is just a cover, um, not electric cooktop. So let's take a look at the air condition. So if I wanted to turn on the air condition, I'm gonna press the power button. I'll press it one more time. And I'm in the cool mode. I've got the fan in auto, but I can change that mode here. And you can see I've got auto mode, I've got heat pump, I've got furnace, fan, and then back off. So I've got a bunch of different modes I can control with just this air condition. These are the return filters. This is the filters that you take out and you clean and wash and you can reuse them. It looks like that was up in the AC duct. All right, so we'll pop this back down here. There we go. All of these vents are controllable too. You can close and open them as needed, but we have another return here and one more here. Let's look at the refrigerator. This is the Dometic refrigerator. And right now I'm plugged in or I've got the generator running. It's in auto, so it's selecting electric. It, it chooses the most efficient way it can run. I've got the cold set all the way up, so right now I'm frozen inside my uh, freezer. I can put my ice cream in there. 
Um, you can open these doors from either side, so that's kind of handy to be able to have. So depending on which way you're coming in at this refrigerator, you can open it from either side. Now I'm going to press this and hold this for just a couple of seconds or so. Let go of that. Now I can dial it in so I can set temperature. I can set what mode I want to go into, whether it's battery mode, electric, or LP. And most folks are going to run this in automatic, just like that. And then we're going to come down and go to the next screen. So you can set temperature. I've got it set for the coldest right now. I've got it in auto. It's selecting electric. One neat thing about this refrigerator is that when I drive, when I take off and crank the engine up, this is going to automatically switch to battery mode, which is a safe mode to travel in. And then when I stop and say I get fuel, this is going to go into a lockout mode for about 10 minutes. And so it won't automatically switch to the LP mode. So you don't want the flame burning back behind there in the, in the refrigerator while you're at the gas station. So that wouldn't be very safe. So what they've done is put a lockout on this for 10 minutes. You get back on the road and after that 10 minutes is up, it switches back to battery. Now, if I stop longer than 10 minutes, yes, it's going to go to LP but that's assuming you've already done your fuel up and then you're, you're out of here. So, and I'm gonna hold this down for a couple of seconds and that turns it off. So you can see that. Now I'm gonna turn it back on. Boom, when you get the light, you've turned it back on. Now I wanna go into this other menu. There's one more menu here and I'm gonna dial that down so you can see that external menu. So this allows us to turn the light on and off that's inside the fridge here. Uh, it turns on a circulation fan. We're gonna leave that on. I can turn off the speaker, the alarm if I need to. And one more important thing here is I can turn on a grid heater for this freezer in case I get moisture on the outside of that. If I'm in a real humid environment, I may wanna do that. But that's the controls that you have available. And uh, so it works real well. Uh, in the bathroom area, you have a sprayer on the toilet. This is a ceramic toilet, so it makes it easier to clean up. You do have a water pump switch here, and your light switches are over on this side. You do have a shower light up here, so we can turn that on. And the shower, we can adjust that, and that can be going up and down, and then you have a shutoff on the shower. All of these fin fans that we have in the leisure, you can turn on power here. That opens up automatically, so we can turn the fan on. We can turn fan speed on here. This is a fuse in case you blow the fuse. And then I got a thermostat, so I can turn that on just like that. And if it gets hotter in here than it is right now, that would come on and pull the heat out of here. So it's always good to crack the window open when you're doing that. But that's how that works. And these all are on um, a water sensor. So if you get a rain or heavy mist, it's gonna close up for you just like that if you were away from your coach. Never, never recommend that you run these open going down the road because they will uh, oscillate on you some. Shower door, we can just push, hang on to it. It is spring loaded. Boom, there we go. Kind of got a little bit of a versatile door here. When you travel, you want to put that in that lock there on the bottom, right there. Now, if you're here enjoying this lounge area, you can fold it in and then use it on the magnet like that. So now we have a little bit more space here, a little bit more shoulder room. I wanted to show the customer when they look at this coach, this has a built-in surge protector in this coach. And let's see if I can find it. There it is. So underneath this cushion, you can see the red light right there. Okay, so that's a red display. This is the surge guard that's built into this. And that checks you for high voltage, low voltage, open neutral, open ground, reverse wiring. It does a lot of electrical checks on you. And if you get any event uh, like low voltage, it will not let coach, uh, power into your coach. It stops it here. And so you can always go to the park manager and say, hey, look, I'm showing low voltage code on my device. Can you move me to another spot or get that spot fixed? But you do have your surge, surge guard built right into the coach here. And you can see the window. It'll have codes on it. And this shows me the amperage that I'm using and the voltage and the frequency. So uh, it's a pretty neat, neat tool to have that you're using. All right. Okay. 
This is kind of a lounge area back here. Um, you can make it into a small sleeping area. Uh, one of the things you have down here is a is a footstool that you can release and pull out. And then uh, then you can take and you can lift this up and you can make that a, a workstation or or an eating area if you want to. Uh, but you also got the cushions that you can you can put on here and be able to use that. Okay. Um, you can even take some of these back cushions and put them on there if you need to. But this actually goes inside here. And that folds up. Back, back down. You want to make sure you get this back in here and it gets latched because, and I always take and grab the edge and kind of give it a tug and that makes sure it's in. Because if it's not, it's going to roll out. It's actually on. It's on rollers and it can roll out. We've got a nice pantry area here. That's another thing you do when you travel, make sure you're locked up. Make sure you don't uh, release that. So we're going to pull the bed down now. I want to remove these cushions. We're going to go get these out of the way and you can usually put those in between the seats up front. So let's pull the bed down real quick. Um, I'm going to get rid of some of the stuff I pulled out here. We've got a latch over here just kind of uh, pull it to you to take the pressure off of it and you can rotate that latch. Um, you're going to pull this. Now you can slide uh, you can slide out this bottom piece just like this and then there's cushions here if you want to uh, add cushions. Let me get those. They're stored inside of here. So we can put those cushions out here if we want to make just extra support for the bed. It's probably a good idea to do that. Let me push, pull the cushion out of here. So once we've got this down and we've got that unlatched, we can just grab the top of the bed and pull it down. It makes a quick bed to use. This extension comes out. And this flips over. This is Velcroed on this end piece. Uh, you wouldn't have to have this in place if you didn't need it. We have these back recliners. When you want to sit up in bed and recline, you got the jealousy windows here on the outside, and the shade. Got a shade that pulls down. I recommend you ride with that up because it will rub against the handles and might rub a hole in your shade. I've seen that before. And then we're gonna turn the light on here. I've got other lights here if I need to. I can turn those on down below. Right here beside the arm. You have USB chargers here over on that side in the wall. And every outlet that you see, it'll be marked as inverter. So you can use all these outlets that you have. This is a GFCI outlet. But there is one in the bathroom you can't use. And the idea behind that is uh, they don't want you using a hair dryer in those outlets and things like that. To, overload them. We get ready to put the bed back up and you can put all your linen, your uh, your sheets and your pillows in here. You have plenty of space to put things in and fold this up with the sheets on it. But uh, this strap is going to help in doing some of that. And we'll look. Now I'm going to release this strap. Uh, I'm going to release the latch. I have to pull this to unlock it to go back up with it. And we're just going to manually put it back up here. And uh, be careful that you don't have these like this in the out position. You don't want to tear your wood up. We're going to put it right there and uh, make sure we're in between that. But, um, we can put that, make that bed up really quick. Be careful running these, these back in right here. You kind of want to lift up on them so that you don't uh, scrape your floor. And then uh, we'll put these back in place. You can store these in here. Uh, some people will take these and actually uh, they'll put them inside the closet here too. So there's different places you can you can put them. Uh, this also comes up here. And if we want to make this into a, a lounge area, no, we can do so, but we can also uh, pull these up to give us a back. And we can make this into a uh, Uh, seating there, a buff, uh, buffet area here. 
Also, too, I'm going to turn off my generator. I'm hooked up to shore power. We're going to go back down here. So I'm just going to hit the red button to turn off the generator. There we go. So immediately, I'm already plugged into shore power, and it switched back over. So we got our power in the microwave. Now, if I'm dry camping, and I want to turn on the inverter, so what I'm going to do down here, uh, I'm just going to turn off the shore power coming into my coach, okay? So I'm just going to simulate that. Okay, so we've turned off power. No power on my microwave. But if I want to turn the inverter on, use this button down below. So you see the display is blank. So when I'm dry camping, I want to turn that on. Just press that. That turns on the inverter. So it's going to take the battery power, 12 volts, and make 120 volts for you. So you can use some of these devices. You can see I've got my red light on my TV. My microwave just popped up. Um, I can run the rear TV and all of these outlets that are marked as an inverter. Now you can only run up to 2,000 watts, but you can run a coffee maker here and uh, do it that way. So let's see if we got any hot water. So I've already got this here. And there we go, water's already hot. That's just how quick you'll get hot water. And it's an endless supply of hot water as long as you have LP and you have water and a place to put that water as it's going through your faucets. So it's pretty nice to have the, the Truma Aqua Go. When you're not using the Truma, uh, we'll just turn that back off, okay? But I'm inverting right now. So uh, when you go and plug in your shore power, and I'm gonna simulate that, I'm turning back on my shore power. You'll actually see the display uh, repower itself back up. And uh, you'll see here the display. There's power coming in from shore power, a little, little nice little window display. Let's see if I can take this off. We can see better. There we go. OK, so what's happening with this is you can see I have power coming in here. It's going through the charger, charger inverter. And it's actually going through what they call bypass. So the power's coming in, going through the inverter to all my appliances out here. And it's also charging up the batteries. So that's why you see it in bulk charge right now. So it restarted its charge cycle. So we're in bulk charge. But it's going to quickly go to a, a float charge because that's a three-state charger. And I know the batteries are already full. Okay. And you can see 14.5, 14.4. I want to show you the solar panel charge controller up here. That's also connected to the house batteries. And when we look at this, there, there's 14.6 on that. So this is uh, controlling the charge into the house batteries. But if you just tap on the B button, you'll be able to see how many amps are actually coming in from those solar panels on top. And so you get a good idea whether or not you're in the sun or whether or not your batteries are requiring power. So if they're fully charged, uh, and I know they are, then we are probably not going to uh, get anything out of our solar panels. And you have to be out usually in the direct sun to get the best solar. We're going to open up this cabinet here. I've got a DVD player over here on the left. Uh, that is a smart DVD. That's a Blu-ray player with wireless uh, LAN built in. So I could hook up my internet to this and be able to uh, stream my movies to this and then to my TV. So if you have data plan on your phone or your, your device, you can do that. Um, this actually has a uh, WineGuard internet antenna on it, which is called WineGuard Connect. So it'll do internet, and it'll also boost the Wi-Fi signal for you um, when you're at a campground. So if you get a low signal, I wanted to show you there's two different buttons up in this cabinet right here. The top one is the Wi-Fi power button right there. The bottom one is the TV antenna power. So, you know, when you're not using Wi-Fi, yes, you can turn that off just like that. But most of the time, you're going to be using antenna power for the local TV when you're wanting to watch TV. Uh, if you're watching cable, you do need to turn that off, though. So we're going to turn it back on because we're going to watch local TV. And the way that you operate the Wi-Fi is that you have to turn your Wi-Fi on your device, either your phone or your uh, iPad or your computer. And then we're gonna tap onto that. And we're gonna find on our phone or our device, we're gonna find the WineGuard uh, device. And so we're gonna let that, it's still searching for it right now. 
and we'll let that come up here. We'll find it just a second. So what you have to do is find the antenna here on your uh, on your device, and it it's normally a, a wine guard. It'll have a long number behind it, and so let's see if we can find it here. I'm not going to do it when I try to do it here, <laughs> of right? Do you need to so, refresh it? Or? So, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. So what it'll do, uh, you have an internet antenna there, and uh, you'll need a SIM card for that. You'll need a cellular card. If you want to use the mobile internet on the WineGuard Connect, uh, you need to have a card to put into that. So you go to AT&T or Verizon and get a micro SD card for that, a cellular card, and that gets installed in the antenna up on the roof. Okay, uh, So there we are. So there's the wine guard right there. So I would tap onto that for my Wi-Fi. And then I got to enter their password in. Now you're going to find all of this in your manuals right up here in the cabinet. Right here. So we have a password that's listed in the wine guard connect manual that's in here. We would put that in. Then we go back out to the local browser that might be at a campground or a, a public place. And then we log into that browser and we put in an address for WineGuard's antenna. And uh, that'll be also in your, in your instructions. So you put that address in and then it builds a, a firewall for you and it boosts the signals that are coming in. So we get boosted signal there too. And we can also do the uh, internet if you have a cellular card. But right now we're going to turn on the television. And the television... Uh, every time you go to a different area, you need to scan that area for the channels. So we're going to turn on this TV. And for this TV, I have a sound bar built in above this. So I can get that real dynamic sound here when I'm watching a movie. So this is my local digital TV. Let me get your head. So I got local digital TV here. But if I want it to come through the sound bar, I just need to hit the power button here at the top. And turn it on. You can tell the difference. It's really a nice boosted sound, dynamic. Turn it off, and then you just have the speakers for the television. This TV will actually, it'll pull out, so we're going to release the cable. So we can pull that out and tilt it toward our theater seating here and be able to really view that and enjoy it. Now, if I want to run a DVD, I've got to change the TV, use the input button. I'm going to come down to the HDMI, and that's going to actually, we'll be able to load our DVD or CD into this. It comes through the HDMI switch box right here that you see, and then to the TV, and that's what you're seeing right here. So this is going to be just a setup screen here for the DVD player, and uh, we'd have to go through all the options on that. So that's what we're doing. Right there. So it's actually trying to scan for a wireless network that you might have hooked up. But I'm going to exit out of that. I'm going to get into the top menu here. And even here on the wireless, you can see our, you can actually see our wine guard um, antenna that's up on top too. It's just looking for all those Wi-Fi signals that are in the area. So that's what it's doing. So we're going to do home. So this is the home for the for the disc for the Blu-ray player. And you can see I don't have a disc in there now. But that's how you play the DVDs on the screen. Now I'm going to hit the input and go back to the local TV. Every time you go to, to a different area and you want to watch the local digital channels, you need to scan that area for the channels. So just go through the menu, and there you'll see channel over there. And that's how you go through and do the auto scan. Turn this off. Same with the back TV. So you have one in this back lounge area here and you can do that with that same controls same same remote hdmi switcher and this is if you have another device hooked up to your hdmi switcher here whether it's an xbox or a satellite receiver for satellite tv you can put one in here but you do need to get the satellite antenna that goes up on top uh, to do that there's a quick disconnect for the lp hookup outside it's in the box there it's just some information for you on the carbon filter that you have. So that's what we're using. So I'm going to show you the whole house filter. The whole house filter, 
the water's going through that filter and it's right here down below the sink so this is the whole house filter I've already got that installed and there's the wrench in case you need that for taking off the uh, the filter do that about once a year you can change out that filter I'm gonna turn off the lights in here you can turn off the lights there I'm gonna turn off this light up here that is a clothesline for the shower in case you're wondering what that is right there and so you can you can pull this line across tighten up that little screw and put your towels and stuff on there to dry up in your shower and then once I loosen that up it goes back into place I'm just going to snug that up for you okay if remember for travel we're going to lock this door up there we go that'll rock and roll on you if you don't so I've got my table leg in here I've got my little table set up here that I want to use this will screw into the into the portal there in the bottom it simply goes on here it goes on the top so this will pivot and go around um, your chairs will spin around so you can use this as a as an eating area as well we're going to pop this up you can loosen this up on the bottom and so you can slide this table in different directions if you need to so it's got some adjustment to it so we're going to loosen that up we're going to pop this back up here and get that over in the center when you want to release the pole you have to push this button and that's a release for the ratchet so if you don't do that you're not going to get this pole out of the ratchet and then we'll store it back up in here there's actually a there is a strap for this and i'll show you we're going to take this and we're going to put that in there i'm going to take the strap and for travel if it's not locked down in an rv it's going to move it's going to rattle it's going to go somewhere so and the pole goes right in there i'm going to run the tv back in here so i'm going to pull down the latch a little bit and then just set that back in place that should be locked there uh, we're going to turn off our dvd and i'm going to Turn off your Wi-Fi at the top. I usually just leave the uh, antenna booster on for the local TV. Um, so I think I've already showed you that, but you have a vent that comes up like that. So you have a nice skylight that comes up. You can also place it in those areas like that and, uh, and pull that down or, or up and then pull it down. And that way it locks it so you don't get any wind that's going to buffet that and, and knock it up. When you go to put it back in place, you can you can lift up on that. And then lock it back in place. And then we have the block out, and then we have the mosquito screen, the bug screen. Okay. All right, let's talk about driving here. Down in here. So I've got a bunch of keys that I can use. I've got a key fob. The round key that you see is for the safe. In case your batteries died, then you can manually open the safe up. You just take out the plug and use the key. I've got a deadbolt. I've got a door key. I've also got two keys here for the outside compartment doors. They're all 751 keys. And I've got extra keys. Again, I've got three more key fobs and a bunch of door keys here. Uh, if I want to manually, if I want to manually open this door, I can do so. I just have to pop this key out here and then pull the manual key out and operate the lock in case the power were to shut off on the coach. But just have this nearby and so you can have, uh... <laughs> there we go. So you can have this key fob here and uh, if it doesn't work for you, you can always take the key fob and put it down into the safe place right down there and that's going to read it every time. Okay, that's also a good way to reprogram a key fob if it quits working. Um, so we're going to step on the brake. I'm going to push the keyless start. So I've started this up. I've got a tilt wheel here so I can tilt telescope and get that where I like it. And adjust that. The way they've designed the steering wheel is all the controls right here keep your eyes forward. And we're going to look at this. I can actually turn on the cruise control right here on this button here you're going to see a little emblem come up above the P and then uh, you can set it you can resume cancel and you can also cancel it by hitting the brake and then you can go minus on the set so you can set it to speed that you want but you got to turn it on here first um, 
I do have a, a home position, so the way this works is I do this, and you can see on the display, uh, I press that, I get in the home position. Then I can use my little scanner, my little mouse pad with my finger, and I can go over to service. You can press that, and this is where you can actually, you can look at the depth fluid. So I can see the depth fluid gauge there. I can go back home and go down and look at the oil level too. So both of those are okay. I did that really quick, but you get the idea. Um, particle filter, that's also cleaning up the emissions on the engine. So we can take a look at that, and if we have any issue with that, we can uh, bring it in for service. But you can go to the Assist Plus, and that rounds up the number of days you have before you need the next Service A. There's Service A and Service B schedules. Uh, so you can look in your manual for that. Uh, we can go down here to zero messages. I don't have any messages, no error codes on the engine, so that's nice to see there. We're going to go back, and then we can go over to Drive Assist. Drive Assist uh, is a, uh, a feature that they have on these coaches, to, um, on the Mercedes in particular. So when I have the cruise control locked in and I'm driving, uh, it will look at the car in front of me and it will adjust my speed accordingly and keep the safe distance from that car. Now I can adjust that distance with this control that you see right here while I've got that set and while I'm going down the road. Um, so that's what that is, but it basically it will put the brake on and then it will put the cruise back on and maintain that safe distance from the car in front of you. Let's go back to home here. We're going to go to trip odometer and you can scan down through that and you can see all the different features that you have there. I'm going to go back home. And navigation, all of these menus you can go into. And if I have the radio turned on over here, then when I go into navigation here, I can see the direction I'm going in. I can also look up previous destinations that I have logged in uh, to my navigation system. Now radio, I can go into the radio. Uh, I can turn on the radio there and then I can adjust the volume on this side. And let's go back to home. Media, I can see when my Bluetooth is hooked up or if I have a USB device hooked up. Phone, I can uh, look and see if my Bluetooth telephone is hooked up. Which, by the way, once you hook up the Bluetooth to the radio here, you can, uh, you can answer it here on the steering wheel, adjust your volume. And there's a microphone built in up here at top, so speak clearly. So you can have the hands-free telephone. Uh, we're going to go back to settings. Here you can, you can set up uh, some vehicle settings like the rain sensor. Uh, you can set up the display uh, where if you want to see uh, the, uh, the deaf fluid, you can permanently have it set right there on the display. So that's kind of fun to look at there. Here's your diesel fill over on the left side, so that's your diesel gauge. Here I have the depth fluid gauge now up there. And I'm in park right now. You can see I've got the gear shifter in park. And the way that you switch those is you just drop it down into drive. You can also go into reverse and you see your reverse camera come up here. And then when I go back to park, if I stop and park, I can just push that and now I'm back in the park. Keep in mind that if I'm in drive and I open the door, that also takes me back into park just as safety. And you can see I've got my handbrake pulled, my parking brake, and I've got the parking light on right there. So in order to release the parking brake, you have to pull back on the lever, down with the button, and then watch the light as it goes off. If you still got a light, you still got that brake on. And remember, this is a foldable handbrake, so this folds out of the way so I can still turn the seat, but the brake is still connected, it's still on. So when I want to release that, Always look up here and make sure you're doing that right. So I'm going to pull that back on. I'm going to go back to the home position here. And we're going to go back to something like radio. Now, all of the radio that you see over here on the right, the 10 plus inches of screen, we can control all that with these buttons over here on the, on the right. So the idea is to keep your eyes forward and have all your controls here handy. One of the things we can do, you see the levers behind here, we have paddle shifters for the drive. So when I put it in drive, I can go up and down in the gears. So you can see me manually stepping through the gears right there and then back to drive and automatic. But that's what this will do for you. Also the wipers, when you push in on the wipers, you'll see the washers distribute evenly on that wiper. So these are really neat wiper blades 
that uh, the way they put the water out on the windshield gives me a nice clean windshield for that. Uh, so air condition controls over here. I've got fan speed. I've got temperature over here. That button in the center is just your emergency flashers. This is a recirculate button, so it recirculates the air in the summertime so you get the best cooling in the cab area. If you turn it off, you're going to get fresh air from outside into your air conditioner. Uh, this is just the direction. We can do mid-level defroster or floor level or any combination therein. Um, so when you want to turn it off, you just go all the way down and boom, that turns it off right there. Now back to the big screen up here. When I go to home, I can scroll through any of these things on the radio here and I can go to navigation and then I can put in where to. Here I can put my address so I can enter my address. I can do points of interest over here however I want to do it. You can also um, do some of this with Hey Mercedes. So if this is hooked up I'm looking for the voice command. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Go to McDonald's. And so it's going to plot the route to McDonald's in the local area. And so we can do some voice commands here. Here we go. Please proceed to the highlighted route. So it's going to do that. Um, but you can do the voice command for also like uh, radio. Now you can turn that off if that gets annoying for you, turning off the prompt. We can go to settings. We can go to System and go to Linguatronic, and you can turn that off right there. Okay, so that's the that's one of the questions I get. How do I turn that off till I learn my system and learn how to do it? But you can see all the apps that you can do. You can hook up the internet to this system as well on your smartphone. We can look at engine parameters here. And then we can look at our fuel consumption while we drive and check that out. Uh, but this is kind of nice here too. Here's where we can do the operator's manual. So I can look at the operator's manual while I'm sitting still. And you see you can't do it while it's in motion. So I'm going to put myself back in park and it lets me do it. So you have to be at a standstill before that works. And then we can do a search and I can look up like oil. Just to give you an example. I can type. There we go. And then we can just kind of look up some parameters on that. And this is basically a copy of your owner's manual. So you don't have to have the actual physical copy of it. You can always look that up, viscosity and the amount of oil. Those type of things. We're just going to scan through this. On the radio, you have FM, AM, and you have Sirius. So you can go to Sirius. You're going to get a few channels at first. Um, I don't know how long they're going to last, but you can subscribe to this. That's presets there, but if you go down, all the way down in channels, you'll finally get to a radio ID, and when you get the radio ID, that's what they're going to ask you for when you call into Sirius XM, and so you can give them the radio ID. And when you give them the radio ID, they can activate this radio and put it on your account. Okay. But we're going to go back to radio. We'll go back to FM. And if I want to change channels, I can do all that through this little mouse over here. So there we go. So there's a lot of stuff you can do here. You can go back to you can go back to home, go to navigation. And so you can control things from here. There's a couple of more buttons on here. I can do the prompt like this. And that's going to do the Hey Mercedes, how may I help you there? Right there. And you can do some favorites that you have in place. Um, there's a couple of buttons up here I want to show you. This one right here is an SOS button. So if I need emergency responders, first responders, if I need an ambulance, a policeman, um, I can actually push that button. That'll connect me with Mercedes, sort of like OnStar. Oh, yeah, connect I me. <laughs> there it goes. And then that, they'll what ask you, you, what kind of responder do you need? Do you need an ambulance? Do you need fire trucks or whatever? And they'll send that way to you. Um, over here on the left is for maintenance. So if I, if I need some roadside assistance or I need a tow or if I need fuel, 
uh, tire fixed, I can press the service here and that will connect me with Mercedes as well. Okay. There we go. Place to put my eyeglasses in there and got dome lights up here. Okay. And I've got storage above my driver's head there. Now these are what I call uh, single buttons or dumb buttons. I can just press and go to map right there if I need to quickly go to that and go back home here. Um, I, can, I can press this and hold it if I want to turn things off and then do system off and turn it back on. If you just want the display to go off, you can have the display off, but you can still hear the radio behind it and turn that back on. So you can do volume here, some of the basic commands here. Um, right over here, you can telephone. Another thing about this is like if I'm if I'm just going around the parking lot real slow, usually within 20 miles an hour, I can turn my camera on. But once I get up to speed, that's going to turn off for safety. And Mercedes disables that when you drive so that you can't have that on when you're driving. Uh, but that's a kind of a na nice little feature there that we have. Okay. Let's see what else we got here going on. Uh, make sure that we we can swivel this seat and that seat. That's not a problem. Just make sure the seat's upright and forward to be able to do that. Um, we have cup holders here and here. And one thing we have in here too is uh, we have the micro USB-C plugs for charging. So you have to get the adapter cable for that. And then we have uh, 12 volts over here on the left side. And this is also an induction charger for your phone. So if you have induction charging on your phone, you can just lay it up into there and that will charge your phone as well. So we have all these cup holders here up top and over on that side, we have them in the door. Got them up front here, so we just have a ton of cup holders. There's a physical chassis manual that you see over here in the glove box. We also have a lot of airbags now, some that have been added. So we have drivers and passengers. Uh, we have the side curtain airbags. We have also the airbags here built into the seat, so we have a lot of safety that's uh, involved in the coaches now. Okay, so we're gonna turn that down, and uh, you do have a mirror. <laughs> this is so you could probably see what's happening behind you here inside the unit if somebody gets up and goes to the restaurant, uh, restroom, and things like that that you need. So we're going to turn off the power here. This display will go off uh, after a bit. It will time out and then go blank, so you're not totally. Always remember to shut your radio off if you're not using it. But you can use it as your house radio. So you can turn that on and use it inside the cab. And that's it. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions, be sure to drop a comment below. Or if you have any suggestions on content you'd like to see, we'd love to hear about that. Go ahead and give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again from Vod RV.